I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I guess uh, if I was improvising over it, there's a lot of different things that I would do. Maybe some things that I can just offer people as some uh, advice for maneuvering around it. Obviously, you have the G Dorian scale. One thing that I always like to do that's an easy thing to do, and we've talked about this before, is just mix the major seven and the flatted seventh. <laughs> want a little bit more of an outside sound right that's one little trick um chromaticism do, surrounding chord tones with chromatics so for example if i'm doing g minor let's say i want to do chromatic around the five so I'm like two below two above right you can do all that kind of stuff and kind of weave that in and out of some arpeggios or some scalar stuff um and then mm -hmm. beyond that um there are some other options as far as superimposing different melodic minors which um We've talked about that a lot in our previous videos, but one that I do really like the sound of is, and it might might be a little tricky in this song because we actually go to B flat minor, but I like mixing the G uh, melodic minor and B flat melodic minor because you get this nice combination of the major seven, the flat seven, and then also the, the natural five and the flatted five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, but um, I guess it would depend on how it would come out in the context of this, because like I said, we're going to B flat minor, but if I'm just playing over just like a stagnant minor chord, those are some ideas that I might do to maneuver around it. Those are great ideas. So G melodic minor, as you referenced, and you're playing beautifully, uh, it just introduces the major seven. We could also think of that as a version of an implied five, because that's also it's the D7 augmented, it's the fifth mode. So when you're playing G melodic minor, you could just think of that as referencing the major seven over minor. Think of it as a, as a G minor, which it is. Or you can also think of that as a D7. So it might go. So that could just be G minor, but I can also think of that as D7. So. So if I'm referencing a few more chord tones relative to a D, I can reinterpret that G melodic minor as a D7. Now the B flat melodic minor, as you correctly mentioned, it's just, it sounds a bit bluesy because it has that flat five, that's the low green sharp too. But the way to maybe differentiate that from the actual B flat melodic minor that happens a few bars in, if you treat that B flat melodic minor as Dorian, so if I'm going from, one way to differentiate that B flat melodic minor is G minor and then just a straight up Dorian just take that A down to an A flat and then we've got B flat Dorian so we're going from this to my G minor then so there's my so then, then we do have that movement of G minor to B flat minor that's how we differentiate maybe and you could I would argue you could play the B flat melodic minor over the B flat minor too but they do sound a bit the same. So I think one of the reasons maybe you were feeling a little cautious about that is to give our playing a bit of variety and not be locked into melodic minor sounds for those first first couple of changes. Yeah, and that makes perfect sense too, taking the A and just lowering it to the A flat. And that comes back to what you were saying earlier about voice leading, just finding these notes on top, you just adjust it by either moving up or down and all of a sudden you get this nice smooth movement that clearly outlines whatever chord you're going to.